Hey everybody, welcome to lesson uh, two of topic nine. We're going to be talking about more stoichiometry and converting mass to mass. If you've not done any stoichiometry at this point, I highly suggest you go back and watch um, lesson one in topic nine. Um, this is just a little bit more steps in here and just a little more practice. But before we get going, I'd like to give a shout out to my sponsor, um, Avogadro's uh, Pest Control. If you've got problems with moles, call 902 10 23. Now let's get going. <clears throat> so we're going to do a little more um, a little more steps involved in this one and it's going to be a little more realistic in that we can't actually uh, measure moles on a balance or something like that. We measure things in mass generally speaking. So we're going to go from mass of one thing to mass of another thing and um, so let's take a look at this problem here. Ammonium nitrate, which is NH4NO3, is an important fertilizer. It produces um, dinitrogen monoxide and water when it decomposes. And the question is, determine the mass of water produced if 25 grams of ammonium nitrate is decomposing. So what would be the mass of water One. produced? And there's our favorite little sidekick. Um, and she says, the first thing we got to do is analyze the problem. And we note that we first take a look at problems, any kind of word problems, and note what do you have? Well, we've got 25 grams of ammonium nitrate. And what is it that we need to turn this into? That's our unknown. And it's asking to determine the mass of the water. And I'm looking here, and if I notice that I have one molecular element and I'm converting to another molecular element, I need a balanced equation. This is where stoichiometry comes into play. So let's get that balanced equation. Two. So to balance the equation, we have ammonium nitrate decomposing into dinitrogen monoxide and water. So I would write it like this. Ammonium nitrate is decomposing into um, dinitrogen, ni dinitrogen monoxide and water. And if we take a look here, is it balanced yet? Well, I've got one nitrogen and I've got, uh, I'm sorry, I've got two nitrogens right here and I've got two, which is good. I have only two oxygens though and I have three over here. And I also have a problem with my hydrogens. I've got four hydrogens and I only have two. So by simply adding a two over here, I think I balanced it. So I've got four hydrogens and four hydrogens. I've got two, three oxygens, three oxygens, and I've got two nitrogens and two nitrogens. So it's balanced right now. Now, um, what I highly recommend is when you when you do these problems, stoichiometry problems, write, get your balanced equation and write what you have on the equation and what you need to solve for on the equation. So I have 25 grams of this one and I need to know how many grams of the other I have. Now let me tell you the most common mistake people are going to make on this one that people don't really understand the concept of stoichiometry. Uh, they will probably, a lot of people will do this, they'll say that there's 25 grams of ammonium nitrate and therefore it's since it's for every one ammonium nitrate you get two waters so a lot of people will mistakenly just put 50 grams of water because there's twice as much water as ammonium nitrate and that would be incorrect because if you remember when we introduced stodium, um, stoichiometry I said the main thing I need you guys to remember is this is not a mass to mass relationship this is a mole to mole relationship in other words one mole of ammonium nitrate turns into two moles of water it is not a mass to mass relationship and it makes sense because think about it if you had one gram of this would that turn into one gram of this and two two grams of this that would mean one gram turns into three that's not the case at all but you see that you have the same amount of nitrogens and oxygens and hydrogens on both sides so the mass is conserved all right and that's just kind of old review stuff if you're confused on what I just said go back into those prior lessons so what do we need to do? We need to convert moles to moles. In order to do this, I come up with like a roadmap. What's our game plan here? Well, right now we are in mass of ammonium nitrate. Since this is a mole to mole conversion, I need to convert the mass of ammonium nitrate into moles of ammonium nitrate. And then I can convert moles of ammonium nitrate into moles of water. 
right here, and that's our stoichiometry, our, our 1 to 2 ratio right here. And then the answer is in grams. I'm going to convert that into grams. So I'm going to do this in three steps here. The first step was convert the grams of ammonium nitrate into moles of ammonium nitrate. So to do that, I need the molar mass of ammonium nitrate. And I would suggest pausing the video right here and using a calculator in your periodic table and determining the, the molar mass of ammonium nitrate. So pause right now and let's take a look at what you got. So 25 grams of ammonium nitrate, I'm going to multiply that by the molar mass um, and that would be grams per mole. I'm going to put the grams on bottom so they cancel out. And the sum of a nitrogen plus four hydrogens, another nitrogen, and three oxygens is 80.04. Um, and that's grams per mole. And I come up with 0 0.312 moles of ammonium nitrate right now by taking 25 divided by the 80.04. And now I'm in moles of ammonium nitrate. And that's why I have this roadmap here to kind of help remind me of where I'm going with this. So now I'm in moles of ammonium nitrate. And uh, the next step would be, because I made this nice roadmap, I'm going to go to moles of, a water, of water now. <clears throat> so how do we convert moles of ammonium nitrate into moles of water? Well, that's where we need a balanced equation. That's the stoichiometry step of this. So for every one ammonium nitrate, there's two water. And now, now we can do this. This wasn't a mass to mass relationship. This is a mole to mole relationship on the a balanced equation. So um, we had on the last step, we said that we're at 0 0.312 moles of ammonium nitrate. And I'm going to multiply that um, by this ratio here. Since I have moles of ammonium nitrate, I want my denominator to be moles of ammonium nitrate so they cancel out. I'm always setting this, these uh, dimensional analysis steps to cancel. And now um, my numerator is what I want it to be in. So I want to be over here, uh, two moles of water. So I'm going to take this number and multiply it by two. And I get 0 0.624 moles of water. Again, I take a look at my roadmap that I made at the beginning. And now I am in moles of water, but I don't want to be that's not my answer. The answer says determine the mass. So I need to get this into grams of water. So that's going to be right here. Since we know moles, since we know moles of water right now, I can convert that into grams of water by using the molar mass of water, which is the sum of two hydrogens and one oxygen. So 0 0.625 moles of water. The molar mass of water would be two hydrogens plus one oxygen, the molar mass on the periodic table. And I cancel out the moles. And I have this time I have grams on top because I remember I'm setting up to cancel. The moles are on the bottom here. And um, I get this on top over here. So it's 6 point, uh, 0 0.625 times 18.02 grams of water. And the final answer is 11.2 grams of water. And I have gone through my roadmap and I've got all the way to where I want to be. And so that would be how we do this. You got to make sure you keep these steps um, apart where molar mass is always grams per one mole. This part here on the periodic table where if we go back to the last problem here, this two to one ratio, these coefficients only come into play at this step here in the in the stoichiometry, converting moles of, of something into moles of something else. That's where these numbers come in. A common mistake that students make is they'll see that the water, and they'll want to put this two here because it says two waters. You already accounted for that two right here. It's already been accounted for. You don't do it over and over and over again. Okay, You account for it once, and, it, and that's where it comes into play. Grams to moles, you don't need um, the coefficients of a balanced equation. And in fact, you don't need a balanced equation at all. You can just take a, a sample of iron and say, okay, I've got this many grams of iron, how many moles it is. Is there? You don't need a formula for that. So you know, remember, that's always a one um, grams per mole. And that's a common mistake I see people doing with these problems. Okay, so that's our um, practice here. So our workshop for this one here is um, the first one, 1A, is just like what I just modeled for you. So see if you can use um, different 
compounds, different elements, and different values, but it's the same thing. You're going to convert grams to moles, moles to moles, grams. To, so here, we, look, we're talking about we have grams of hydrogen. So we've got grams of hydrogen right here. And the question is, how many grams of ammonia will be produced? So if we take 2.1 grams of hydrogen, react it completely, how much ammonia will we produce? So roadmap, take the 2.1 grams of hydrogen, convert that into moles of hydrogen, and then convert moles of hydrogen into moles of ammonia, and then convert moles of ammonia into grams of ammonia. For the second one, how many kilograms of hydrogen are needed to produce um, 4.23 times 10 to the 27th molecules of ammonia? So here we're starting on, on B, you're going to be starting with ammonia, and you got to convert that into this, this is molecules of ammonia. You're going to have to convert that into moles of ammonia. And to do that, you need Avogadro's number. Um, if you have forgotten, Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or in this case, molecules per one mole. So with this equivalence you could flip it if needed to convert out of molecules and into moles so that would be the trick for this second one here so you're going to convert molecules of ammonia into moles of ammonia and then you can convert moles of ammonia into moles of hydrogen and then you can convert moles of hydrogen into grams of hydrogen using the molar mass of hydrogen remember hydrogen is h2 the molar mass of hydrogen is two hydrogens and then you can finally convert um, grams of hydrogen into kilograms of hydrogen because you know that or you should know is that there's 1,000 grams per one kilogram okay so give these a try and we'll go over those answers together um, and save any questions highlight something or save any questions when you work on this stuff so that we can address it in class good luck and I will talk to you guys soon